Now, the only reason why this thing came in, because our car buddy's not really a maintenance freak, it's got a little brake shutter. Now, it'll drive you crazy, you start to get on that pedal, and that front end, that steering wheel starts shaking on you, but it's also really unsafe. So we're gonna take a look. Now, typical cause is your rotors are warped. Now, I see he's got a little bit of towing action going on. I know he's an aggressive driver. We oh. probably overheated these rotors, got them warped, and now that pad's trying to hang on there as that rotor's going round and round. Now, the first thing I notice, the pad's got some life in it, but it's probably been overheated. You know, we've saturated this rotor. Time to replace it. Like can, heat, a lot of times, will warp it, give you that kind of mm -hmm shake. Yeah, there's a lot of casting, residual stress in here. You get the temperature hot enough, that metal can start to move around. So we know we're going to go ahead and replace the rotors. Now, while we're there, there's no sense on putting an old pad on. So we're going to do the pads as well. Now, it did have a soft pedal, too. So we can kind of check all of our rubber lines, see if anything's swelling, sort of internal bursting. That'll create a soft pedal. A lot of times it'll make the vehicle turn one way or the other. Now, if all that checks out good, you know, we're still gonna go ahead and do a bleed. That'll make sure there's no air in the lines. Make sure you got the best pedal possible. All right. Now, once you got some pad wear, that piston's extended out of that caliper. You're never gonna get a new pad with full thickness back in there. So you're gonna have to push that piston back in. And I generally like to do it while it's still assembled. Everything's dirty anyway. Now, if you're gonna replace the pads, you can slide a little screwdriver and be careful. You're gonna slide it in and find a good spot and just kind of slowly wedge that pad and that piston back in there. And I like to go ahead and break open the bleed screw and let that old fluid just kind of run out into a catch pan. Get it out of there, but make sure, you know, by the time your piston's stopped, you got the thing locked off. So that gets everything compressed. Now you can start pulling off, you know, your caliper, the pads will drop right out and pull your rotor off and get busy. Now, a lot of times these bleed screws will get corroded in there. They're pretty small and fragile and they'll get rounded off. So a cool trick is this grip tight super socket. Now this has these basically little like cam lock features in it. So as you start to turn it, these little guys will grip the flat spots of that, you know, screw or bleeder and actually, you know, grip it enough to break it loose, you know, even if the corners have been rounded off. So if you get an old one of those guys, you know, one of these little grip tight super sockets give you a nice locking way to break it free again. So I got a couple little bolts here. I'll pull the caliper off. It's always good to get yourself a coat hanger or a wire, you know, and hang the caliper off it so you don't put any tension, maybe burst to, you know, tear the inside of this line. And from there, it's pretty simple. Pull a couple of brackets and the rotor comes off. We're ready to put it back together after a little bit of cleanup. So let me get busy on that. Yeah, now that's typical. This rotor doesn't have enough meat on it to turn it and get it machined and get it true again. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to chuck it and put a new one on it. Now it measures decently, sort of uniform, you know, around the radius here, but you know, it's got that warpage issue and that's what's giving us that shutter when we go to brake. And I'm gonna get up here and check out the copper levels on the brake fluid. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you can't check it by tasting it. You can't check it by looking at it. You gotta actually do a test. And from Phoenix Systems, we've got this brake check, this brake strip. And what we're looking for is copper. I'm gonna come down here and show you the chart. So you put it down. This works within a minute, so it's really easy. And all you do is read the chart. The copper is actually inside of the steel lines, it's slowly corroding and wanting to work out into your brake system. Yeah, now that copper is there on purpose. The OEMs put it in there, but it's the corrosiveness of the fluid and the breakdown, it starts to get that copper you know, in, in the fluid itself, and the system will let you test that level and tell you how good the fluid is and whether you need to change it or not. Now these are the same kit. This is one if you just do a few changes, you know, if you want to test a few. This is a kit for a pro, so this comes with 100. Now, judging by the chart, if we were to get to, let's say 200, you want to definitely flush the system and start over. We're somewhere about 100, so we're looking at where you want to check every oil change, every maintenance uh, frequency. Yeah, so, and today, you know, we're, we're, we're doing okay. We can kind of monitor from here on out. We don't have to flush everything. We can go ahead and do our brake job. We can put the bleeder on it, make sure we don't have no air in the system, get a nice firm pedal, and we can get on the road in no time. Yep. All right. Hey, welcome back. We've got everything put back together on our brake system. We've got our new rotors, we've got our new pads. Now the next thing to do is bleed the system. Now there's a couple ways, you know, we're all familiar with. You can do a gravity bleed if you're just, you know, 
putting on a whole lot of new hardware like calipers and wheel cylinders. Gravity bleed, just filling the cylinder up, the master cylinder, letting gravity kind of start to push fluid down, but that won't get your air out. And we all know the 10 time push, you know, you sit there for a half an hour and try to get all the fluid to shove down the air bubbles out. You know, that works pretty good too. And you can do a vacuum. So you can pull a vacuum down here on the caliper, pull the fluid down. But every one of those methods is trying to make the air go the wrong direction. Now we all know bubbles float up. So if you're up here at the master cylinder, you know, pushing fluid down, you may get the bubble to go down a little bit between pumps and then starts to rise back up again. So the best way to do it is a reverse bleeder. Now there's a really great bleeder from Phoenix Systems. Not only does it look like a ray gun, which is really cool, but it's got a lot of neat features too. I've got the you know, adapter for the flashlight so I can get into those dark, you know, creepy places. And I've got all the adapters to do any type of bleeding, you know, whether it's a bench bleed for a master cylinder up on the vise, you know, or if I want to do a vacuum bleed. This one can do it all, but it's best known for the reverse bleed because it gets you such a nice firm pedal and pushes all those air bubbles the way you want them to go. So, I'm going to attach this guy to a nice convenient spot with my magnet. I've got all the air bled out of here by squeezing it. Now all I got to do, basically pop it on, let me grab my wrench, break my bleeder open, just, and I'll squeeze the handle just a little bit to make sure I've got no air in there. Now I can put a few pumps in here and start to watch my fluid go up. And that's going to force all my air bubbles to the top. So before you know it, I'm going to have the firmest pedal available. We'll be ready to roll down the road again. Cool, dude. It's a nice, uh, nice tool. Yeah, no, it's real handy.